before him. I 
this morning. He's all. Then, Lord, we pray that you will be with those 
Lord, that are going through difficult situations. There's many that are lonely and, and have without today. Lord, would you just give them your presence this morning? Then, Father God, we pray for those that have recently gone through the valley of the shadow. Lord, we lift up blessed. Would you continue to put your loving arms around him and the rest of the family? Lord, we pray that you'll be with all of our people, Lord. Would you just put your loving arms around them? And I pray a spiritual hug to all of them. Lord, we pray for our military men and women all over the world. Many aren't with family this Christmas. Lord, would you just surround them and be with them? And Lord, we pray for all of our, our government. Lord, we pray that if our elected officials know you not, Lord, I pray that they will come to a personal relationship with you. And then, Lord, we pray that you'll be with our country. May we never take you out of Christmas. May we always have you in Christmas. Lord, you know the needs represented here today. We place them at your feet. Lord, we pray that this Christmas we have learned that we can just rely on you, that we can have good times, but we can also keep our eyes on you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for coming, leaving heaven and coming that first Christmas as a babe that you walk like we walk. So you know what we go through. But then you paid the ultimate sacrifice, and that was dying on the cross for our sins. Lord, we give you praise this morning for that. You are the reason for the season, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we give you praise, and we give you glory. In thy name, amen. Amen. This evening, or this today, we light the candle, the fifth candle of Advent, the Christ candle. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to the earth as a babe in a manger so that we can know salvation. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for this Christmas season. And we ask you to bless each and every one here today. We ask you to just make this new year a brighter and better year for each and every one, Lord. We thank you for bringing us to this point. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray.
I had just heard that CD. And this is where you can sing along with us at the choir when you hear all your voices fall out. Because Joseph was her husband, was a righteous man, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. Hallelujah. When he had 
called together all of the people, chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, he replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod said to the Magi secretly and found, called the Magi secretly and found from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented with him, him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Precious Father, we come on this Christmas morning. Lord, as I came down here this morning, my heart was overjoyed the fact that what all you've done for me, you did it for all of us. You came that first Christmas morning. Lord, help us to be ever grateful. Help us not to take for granted what all you did for us. And Lord, open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us this morning. May I rid myself of Vera and let you speak freely through me. And we'll commit this time to you in thy name. Amen. Amen. I was hoping the kids would stay in here. I was going, let's all sing happy birthday to Jesus. Let's get in the mind. Because this is Jesus' birthday, right? We, we celebrate his birthday today. And we, when we have parties, we sing happy birthday to you. Happy we should sing happy birthday to Jesus Amen. this morning. Isn't that right? Just to get our mind focused on it is Jesus' birthday. And why shouldn't we be in his house to worship him this morning? Let's sing that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Wow, it's Christmas. Some of you that have kids know that it's Christmas for sure. You know it early. It is Christmas Day. Where did the year go? But here it is. We've, we've been doing things since Thanksgiving towards Christmas. And here it is, Christmas Day. How many of you have opened gifts? How many still have gifts to open? Wow. Yeah. Hope, you know, it is Christmas. I think some of you might have some surprise gifts to wrap, unwrap later, I don't know. But if I ask you this question, not, you might have gotten, you might not. What do you want for Christmas? What did you want for Christmas? I want to ask you a question. If you could have anything you wanted, what would you choose? Think about that. If you could have anything you wanted, what would you choose? Some of you will or have received gifts. Some of the gifts were needed. Some of you received gifts uh, you wanted. Some received gifts or will receive gifts that you like. Some gifts will fit. <laughs> Some gifts you might have to stand in line and exchange them for something that you do want. Or a different size or something. Whatever the circumstance, amid the gift wrapping paper in the bags. Let's not let gifts distract us from the real gift of Christmas. The gift of the love of God. This morning, let's unwrap the greatest gift of all. The gift of Jesus. 
What did God give us for Christmas? We can never complete a list of the gifts God has given us. If you and I sat down and really was honest with ourselves, we could start writing the gifts that God has given each of us, and we could never stop it. Because there would always be something, oh, it might not be gigantic, but the fact that we can breathe easy, because there's some with this wind that can, there's many things that God has given us. So many more. I remember years ago when Oprah had her, her show that every Christmas she would have this thing that would say her favorite gifts, and she'd give the audience gifts every week. Well, good for her. But this morning, we're going to go for a few of my favorite things. The real important gifts that we have been given. You know, we need to be reminded, time in and time out, not to take for granted what Jesus has done for us. The first one, his love. His love. That's a big gift. Yeah. Let, let's take it as a gift. His love for you. His love for me. There is no greater gift that he, anyone can give you than what Christ gave us, and that is his love. Amen. He did, didn't have to give us his love, but he did. He does. He responded to us, to us with relentless and amazing love. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah. Woo! What great gift. God so loved the world that he gave Jesus on that first Christmas. If we go to Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. No greater love than someone dying for someone else. Yeah. The love of God is most vividly represented in the manger. When God stepped out of heaven into flesh to seek and to save sinful creatures like you and I. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made human likeness, yeah. and being found even death on the cross. It was that love that sent Jesus from heaven to earth and love that allowed him to be nailed to the cross. He didn't have to do that, my friends. He did it because he loved us. Yeah. It was God's love it was God's love, that, that gift of love that he gave us. And it provides us with the second gift that I'm going to talk about this morning. The gift of his forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is simply wiping the slate clean. Woo! I like that. His forgiveness, wipe the slate clean. Where it was black is now white because he loved us that much. Our sins were washed away. Friends, we need to wake up and praise God for that. Hallelujah. It is revealing a debt incurred, can you imagine, paid in full. Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I love when I have a bill that I can write in it paid in full. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yes. We have such a debt of sin in each of our lives that Jesus Christ died for us so that he can, we can write on our hearts paid in full. Mm -hmm. In becoming a man, Jesus provided atonement for sin that could relieve our debt and wash away the stain of sin. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In Christ Jesus, the only Jesus is the only means of forgiveness. There is no other means of forgiveness but Jesus Christ. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. In providing forgiveness and salvation, Jesus rescued us. You can put your name there. Jesus rescued Vera. Jesus rescued Jess. We can put our names there. In providing forgiveness and salvation, Jesus rescued us from the penalty, the power, and the pain of sin and has brought us into a personal relationship with him. Woo! That's a big gift. If you have that personal relationship, if you have that personal relationship with him, you know what kind of gift that is. That's a powerful, wonderful gift. There's no other gift like that. Colossians, the first chapter, verse 13 and 14. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. From the dominion of darkness, Jesus Christ came and died so that we don't need to know darkness anymore. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Amen. We have the redemption and the forgiveness of sin available today. And I pray that all of us know that redemption of sin. We can all receive his forgiveness and we who have received that gift had better not take it for granted here on this Christmas morning. Are you taking for granted this morning what Jesus did for you? Oh, I hope not. Oh, I pray not. Many times when, we walk, when we've been Christians for a long time, sometimes we get settled down in a pattern. But let's go back to the, when we first received him and the enlightenment of our soul, our heaviness of our soul was lifted and we felt like we were flying on clouds. Remember that time? We can still feel that today. Let's remember back, just as we're remembering back to that first Christmas morning, let us remember back to when we accepted Christ as our Savior. Oh, we have the, His love. We have His forgiveness. We have His promise. Jesus gave us that gift, His promise. Amen. He promises he will never leave us nor forsake us. Glory, glory, hallelujah. No matter what we go through, he will be with us. He will hold us in the hollow of his hand. Right. Let's remember that. This Christmas morning, let's thank him for that. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's never ever broken a promise. He promises to provide strength we need to endure temptation and to stand firm. He gives us backbone to live for him if we have him in our hearts. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He promises to give us everything we need to live a life that will honor him. If we keep our eyes on him, that gift is there for you and me. He promises to return and to take us to heaven. Glory, hallelujah. He promises that one day we can stand before him 
and we can hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and may that be our goal in life. Where there will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more parting over there. He's never broken a promise, my friends. Oh, his promise. And his next one is his purpose. His promise leads us to one of our favorite, favorite gifts, and that is his purpose. In giving us his love that provides forgiveness, securing his promise, we find that God gives us divine purpose. God has a plan for your life. I don't care how old you are this morning or how young you are this morning. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to give you hope and a future. We have to realize it's God's plan and not our plan. Many times we try to force God's plan to fit our what we want. But our plan is not the best plan. God's plan is the most important plan. He says, for I, have, for I know the plans I have for you. God has a plan for us. He has a purpose for us. He has a purpose for our lives and that's that everything we say and do might glorify Him. Are we living up to that? He's given us that gift today, that purpose today. The purpose of our lives is to honor Him. If we're honoring Him, we're not looking to the left or to the right. We're looking to Him. Are you looking to Him this morning? In the midst of all the hustle and bustle of Christmas, have you kept your eye on Him? He expects us to put Him first in our lives. He calls and expects us to serve His kingdom. Are you living in the plan and the purpose of his life this morning? Are you walking the walk that he wants you to? Are you doing what he's, he's told you to do? He has that plan for us. Another gift, his life. All these other gifts are made possible by this one special gift, his life. Matthew 20, 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 1 Timothy 2, 6, Who gave himself as a ransom for all people, this has been witnessed at the proper time, in his proper time. Oh, he's given us a lot of gifts, those special gifts, that many times we take those gifts for granted, but let's this morning not take those gifts for granted. But I have a question for you this morning. What does God want for Christmas? What does God want for Christmas? Our love. Luke 10, 27 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all, all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Do we? Oh. He wants our love. He wants from you and me our surrender. Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. 
take up their cross. He's never promised us a rose garden, but he has promised that he would go with us. Amen? Amen. We are his disciples. We must deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. Keep our eyes on him and to follow him. He wants us to surrender our will into his will. He wants not only for to be our Savior, but most of all, He wants to be our Lord. Yeah. You see, when we accept Him, He's our Savior, but He wants to be Lord of everything in our lives. Amen. Have you given Him everything in your lives? Are you trying to hold something back? On this Christmas morning, God wants all of us. He wants us to give Him that gift. He gave us life. He wants us to give him our whole self. In order for that, we have to stop fighting for our way. We have to give ourselves totally over to him. The next gift that we can give him is our trust. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord <clears throat> excuse me, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Aren't you glad for that? Trust in the Lord, and He will carry us through. Oh, <clears throat> one gift, our trust. How about our obedience? You see, we give him our trust, but it doesn't stop there. We need to be obedient to him. 1 John 5, 3. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. If you love somebody, if you truly love somebody, you will trust them, and if you trust someone, you will obey their request. Jesus says, if you love God, you will obey his commands. Amen. You will be obedient totally to him. What can you give? What gift can you give God that he wants today? He wants our service. God wants your life to count for something. Recently, I've, I've read about we have the beginning date, we have the ending date, and there's a dash in between. What are you doing for your dash? Are you serving Him? Are you saying, Lord, here I am, whatever you want me to do, I am going to seek what your plan is and what you want me to do in ministry, in witnessing, in every area of our lives. Yes, God wants your life to count for something other than yourself. He wants your life to impact the life of another for His glory. Your love, surrender, trust, obedience, and service are in one place in your heart. In the depths of your heart. Oh, this morning we have talked about the gifts God has given us. The list goes on and on. I just brought a few to the forefront this morning. Very important ones that sometimes we forget. <coughs> or maybe we don't forget, but we don't think about them and thank God for them. This morning, in closing... My question to you, what will you give Jesus for his birthday this Christmas? Oh, we go around and we shop and we give gifts for everyone else. Oh, we try to get the best gift possible. We think about that person and we want, oh, let's give him this. Have we ever stopped and asked, What's the best gift I can give Jesus 
this Christmas. He deserves the gift. It's his birthday. It's Christmas. We wouldn't even have a day to give gifts to others if it wasn't coming that first Christmas morning. What will you give Jesus for his birthday this Christmas? As we leave here this morning, would you ponder that question? What are you going to give Jesus this Christmas? Would you stay up? The closing moments of this service, with every head bowed and every eye closed, would you ask Christ what, he, what the best gift that you could give him this morning? Would you ask him to show you what he wants of you as we end this year? What gift are you going to give him as we end this year and go to the next? What gift are you going to give him? Precious Father, as we close here this morning, I pray that you will go in and out of these chairs and give each one a spiritual hug from you. Lord, I pray that you will just come up on the scene and may each of us ask you with open hearts. Lord, you've given us so much. What do you want me to give you this year? Lord, you've called each of us. Lord, may we place our gift at your feet and may we follow through with whatever gift you want us to give you. And Lord, may we continue through this day thinking about what we will give you. Lord, I pray again that you will surround each one. And Lord, we give you praise and glory. In thy most precious name, amen. Amen. Have a merry, merry Christmas. God bless you.